Hello, hello, boys and girls. Welcome to your second class for the advanced course of English conversation lessons. All right, open your PowerPoint. Go straight to the slide number two. You you're gonna find the expressions for this week. All right, so let's let's see it. I have here three expressions. They are all about money. All right, so let's see what they what they mean. First expression is living within your means. So it means living accordingly with the amount of money you make. Okay, so living with the not spending more than what you have, basically. So the example we have here is Mr. Jen Jensen is a janitor and his wife stay home to take care of their five kids. I don't know how they can live within their means. That's hard. Second one, making ends meet. What does it mean? Being able to pay all your bills. So that means that if you get a paycheck, you are able to pay all the bills from that month without being on debt, right? So the example we have here is, I work very hard to make ends meet. Third one is an arm and a leg. So in Portuguese, we would say os olhos da cara. That means like very expensive. The example we have here is everything that store costs an arm and a leg. All right, good. Let's go ahead and move on to slide number three. So this is a much bigger text than last week, but it's about, like, for me, it's an amazing subject. It's about music. It's about this movement that I, I'm a huge fan. So for, for those who don't know, Seattle in the early 90s was like the center of music in the world. Like, all nice bands, all the cool bands were, like, coming from there, and everything was focused on their music like that that was like end of the 80s into 1995 96 so there was this movement called grunge grunge it's kind of like dirty because they say like the grunge uh, musicians and the fans they kind of look kind of dirty, like greasy hair, long hair, this kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and read the text. Let's go. So the, the title is Music, Seattle Grunge Era. So, between the late 80s and early 90s, an important part of the music history took place in Seattle. Lots of bands based in the city emerged to stardom all at once. Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, and Soundgarden are some, of, are some examples of these bands. They are considered the four greatest bands from the so-called grunge movement. Grunge came into fruition on Seattle's independent sub-pop sub -pop record label, combining guitar distor distortion, amazing anguished vocals, and heartfelt lyrics. Nirvana and Pearl Jam won a rap rapidly increase of their audience and moved to major labels, and released multi-million selling albums. In the wake of their success, Seattle was already experiencing an economic boom as a result of the Microsoft Corporation's expensive growth. It became an, a magnet for record executives looking for the next big thing. As the media spread the world, grunge became an international mania, 
and American department stores soon had sections of grunge clothing. Knockoffs of flannel shirts, thermal underwear, combat boots, and stocking hats favored by Seattle bands and their fans. Despite of all the success, all four bands have a sad history to tell. Let's find out about their path in music history. So that was slide number three. It continues to slide number four. Now they're gonna talk a little bit of, about these four biggest bands uh, from Seattle. Starting with Alice in Chains. The band started in 1988. First big hit was Man in the Box, followed by other hit from the album Dirt, the song called Wood, which was the which was the movie Singles soundtrack, by the way. Singles was a movie in which story happened in Seattle. The main character, character was the vocalist of a grunge band and Perjan's members played a part as his bandmates. As Alcine Chains and Soundgarden made, the, made live performances for the movie. And Nirvana didn't want to make part of it, to be part of it. But continuing talking about Alice in Chains, the band was always struggling with the drug abuse of, their, of its leading vocalist, Lynn Stately, and the bass player, Mike Starr. Both died of an overdose, Stately in 2002 and Starr in 2011. The band returned in 2006 with a new vocalist, William Duvall. Nirvana. That was definitely the most well succeed grunge band, if not from the whole 90s decade. Nirvana had massive, hit, massive hits like Smells Like Teen Spirit, Come As You Are, In Bloom, and others. Kurt Cobain the leading vocalist, was also the songwriter and, and the band guitar player. He was its heart. But he struggled with drug abuse and severe depression, which led him to commit suicide in 1994, leaving his wife, the also singer Kurt, Kurt Ney Love, and a one-year-old daughter. Their drummer, Dave Grohl, later on started a new band called Foo Fighters. He plays the guitar and he is also the leading vocalist. So that was slide number four. Going ahead to slide number five, Pearl Jam. They've reached a huge success back then and they continue to be perform and having successful career until today. The band goes on tour constantly and have been delivering new material every now and then. The, the first album released was in 1991, was a hit, with songs such as Alive, Jeremy, and Black. The band, once called Mother Love Bone, changed name to Pearl Jam after their leading vocalist passed as a result of a drug overdose. He was only tw uh, 12, 24. Eddie Vedder, as then Eddie Vedder was then invited to be part of the, to be the, the leading vocalist for the band. He's al he also writes most of their lyrics. All right, so that was Pearl Jam. Let me just correct something here. Continuing, last band, Soundgarden. They were the first grunge band to get a contract with a major label. The band started in 1984 and they have a number of hits like Black Hole Sun, Outshined, among others. 
When they split, the leading vocalist, Chris Cornell, started a new band with the remaining members of Rage Against the Machine. The band was called Audio Slave. This band was a success with the hits Coach Eyes, Like a Stone, and Show Me How to Live. Soundgarden eventually got back, got back together to go on tour in 2017. To go on tour, sorry. In 2017. During the tour, after a concert in the city of Detroit, Chris Cornell killed himself in a hotel room. He struggled. He struggled with depression. These four bands had amazing and talented musicians, but unfortunately, the drug abuse and depression are an important chapter of their history. Unfortunately. All right, so on slide number six, we have a vocabulary of the, the text, like all the words you see in red, they have the translation of this vocabulary on slide number six. And the other vocabulary you're gonna find here is about a, a YouTube video, is an inter, kind of like an interview with Dave Grohl, who nowadays he is the the vocalist for Foo Fighters, but he used to be the the drummer for Nirvana, so he's talking about his history, how he ended up in Seattle, and how he met the guys what were his impressions of it. So it's interesting and on the exercise that you have, you have some questions about this interview, you have questions about the text, and um, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to answer some questions about the interview and about the text during the live class. So if you see it like, few days before the class, I recommend you to take a look again just to make sure that you have all the information fresh in your memory, all right? So let me just go straight, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the exercise that you have to make. All right, so here is just like some personal questions about music, about your taste, about if you know how to play instruments and this kind of stuff. Second uh, exercise is about the text, about the grunge era. So some questions here. Third exercise is about, like, there are lots of questions about David, David Groh's interview. So you have to watch the video and pay attention. Number four. Maybe this is the, <laughs> the hardest one. I want you to find the lyrics of your, like, like the one that you like the most, the best English song ever, like for you. I want you to take a look at the lyrics and I want you to read it for me and send me on voicemail on your cell phone, all right? Don't sing it, just read it, okay? It's practicing, like, speaking. Uh, and number five is just for you to practice a little bit from the, uh, practice a little bit the expressions that you learned on this class. And just to end everything, it's a popular saying that says, barking dogs seldom bite. All right? So that's it for now, for today. I'll see you in class then. Bye-bye.